Hello to you, church, and welcome back. As we continue to work through Psalm 119, today we're going to be in verses 41 through 48. And this psalm, I think, is very important for us uh, as we just navigate this week. Um, and it, just even our culture right now, especially in an era of social media and, uh, and uh, TV, political pundits and all that kind of stuff. Right now, we live in a time where everybody seems to have a need, uh, almost a necessity requirement, to have something to say. And um, we as a people need to be people who are slow to speak, right, and quick to listen, uh, slow to anger. And um, this passage in Psalm 119 is going to encourage us in that. And uh, we might say it this way, we really don't have an answer, we really don't have anything to say, Christians, until we know what God's answer is. Uh, to whatever it is that needs to be addressed. And, and this passage from Psalm, 19, Psalm 119 uh, helps us with that and addresses that. Uh, we're going to look at it as this uh, verses 41 through 47 give a series of four cause and effect. Um, this happens, therefore that will happen. And then 48, verse 48 is the commitment. So because of all these four things being what they are, I need to make this commitment in verse 48. So I'm going to go ahead and read this, and then we'll look at each of those four commitments. Verse 41, Psalm 119, verse 41. Let your steadfast love, I say, let your mercies, uh, let your covenant faithfulness, your steadfast love, come to me, O Lord. Your salvation, of course, that is the, the end result of God's steadfast love from our perspective in our lives, is that we be saved. Uh, your salvation according to your promise, not of our works, but of God's grace. Then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. We might look at a situation uh, that we're in and we think, how is the gospel the answer to this situation? And uh, if that is our response or if that is our thinking, it may be that we don't really understand the gospel. If we think of our sinfulness, of the sinfulness of man of God's uh, justice, God's righteousness, his holiness, and then his love, that he would give Jesus Christ uh, to die in the place of sinners, that if, if, if we would repent and put our faith and trust in Christ alone uh, for the forgiveness of our sins, that we could have life and, and joy in him forever, trusting in God's word, in his promise for our salvation, uh, the life that that gives us to live and the truth that that gives us to share, that in and of itself gives us an amazing answer uh, to so many things, if not everything, that we would be asked. Uh, so that first one, uh, for I trust in your word. Verse 33, And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth. Don't let me be speechless. For my hope is in your rules. I will keep your law continually forever and ever, and I shall walk in a wide place. And wide place, that word just means at liberty, uh, with some freedom of movement. I remember we were slaves to our sin. We were in bondage, restricted in our sin, and now we have been freed in Christ to be able to willingly do and happily do the things that God has called us to. So uh, I'll keep your law walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. Verse 46, I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, even before kings, where I might be so fearful of the power of man. I will speak of your testimonies before kings and shall not be put to shame, for I find my delight not in the praise of man, but in your commandments. I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. And then the commitment, verse 48. Because these things are true, I will lift up my hands toward your commandments. This lifting up of the hands would be like an eager desire to receive of the truth of God's word. I lift up my hands towards your commandment, which I love. I will meditate on your statutes. So those four those four uh, cause and effects from, from verses 41 to 47 might say it this way. When I trust in your word, 
when I trust in your word, then I'll have an answer. Number two, when I hope, when my hope is in your word, then I won't be speechless. When I seek out your word, that's number three, when I seek out your word, I will know what to do. Then I'll know what to do. And number four, when I delight in your commandments, when I truly take joy, when I find joy in the truth of your word, I will have the confidence and courage to speak even before kings. When I trust in your word, I'll have an answer. When I hope in your word, I won't be speechless. When I seek out your word, I will know what to do. When I delight in your commandments, I'll have the courage to speak before kings. So then we have to ask this question. How do I gain confidence? How do I gain confidence in God's word so that I can have that trust? How does my hope grow in God's word? How does my desire to study and learn grow? And how does my joy increase in God's word? Because we'd lovely to say, right, oh, I'd love to have confidence in God's word. I'd love to have my hope in it growing. Uh, I'd love to have a desire to study and learn and grow. Um, I don't like to read very much, we might say, or different things like that. Uh, it's more fun to watch movies or to play games than it is to read my Bible. Uh, my joy increasing in God's word, that sounds like a right thing. It sounds like a wonderful thing, but how does it happen? And we can look at it this way. It's certainly an act of God's grace. Because natural man isn't going to enjoy the truth of God's word. Natural man is going to run away from God's word. And the philosophies of this world uh, that would love to carry us about with every wind and wave of doctrine certainly is not going to give us an appetite for God's word. But as we seek it out, as we by faith trust in the promises of God and learn from him, humble ourselves and come under the teaching of God through the ministry of the Spirit, we find, because it is true and by God's grace, we find that we can have all confidence in God's word. We can have all hope in the promises our faithful God has made. We can grow in our desire, and that is the case. Our desire to study, our desire to seek out the scriptures grows as we mature in Christ. And the more we learn the word, the more we want to learn the word. And when we see the glorious truths of it, really understanding more and more who God is, how big he is, how amazing he is, how wonderful he is, how much he has loved us and all that he has promised and the glory that will be in eternity. We can even see a situation in a time that is hard and think, even so come Lord Jesus and really believe that that time will be better than the best kind of a day we could have on this earth. And our joy, our delight in him soars. So I would say this to you, Christian, if you're struggling to wonder why God's word would be that, uh, that important or that amazing, I would say to you that you haven't tasted it enough. Jump into the word of God. By faith, obey God and get into the word and taste and see that the Lord is good. Learn from it. Grow in it. Learn to trust it. Gain confidence in it. Gain hope through it. Grow in your desire to study it even more once you start there. And then watch your joy increase in the word of God. And when you do, in times that are needing an answer, in difficult times when you don't know what to do, you watch and see. And we won't have to give answers because we saw somebody on TV say it or because somebody on the radio told us what to think or how to feel. We'll have the authority, the wisdom, the love of the God of the universe, and we'll know what's right, and we'll know how to feel, and we'll know what to say, and when to say it, by God's grace, by his truth, for his glory. We'll see you next time.